I am live, just as, oh, bloody hell. I uh, covered up my tea down here and it got wet and moist. Well, the thing I covered it with, because I had this like tea cover and it broke. It was a ceramic one, it, like covers the top of your tea and stuff. Um, so, hey Ryan, how's it going? Another kind of morning or at least early afternoon. Um, video so today i actually got a new video a new video got a new blu-ray which kind of almost completes collection that i'm actually uh really super excited to get hey scholar there is a new sale you guys you you know there's always a new sale when it comes to uh to my videos so we're going to talk about that <coughs> and if you haven't checked it out yet hey livens uh, uh mvd well mvd is one is what i got you uh definitely what i got but uh the sale i don't think there's an mvd sale is there uh if there is i am i'm not aware of that one but uh i am aware of a 101 film sale and there's a crossover if you live in the uk for instance you probably know who 101 films are if you uh if you're new uh to this channel and you're just started to uh collect you may not have uh, heard of them yet they're a smaller company They've been around for a while, and they have the one-on-one -on -one films, the regular ones, along with what they call the red label and the black label collection. What does that mean? Well, uh, oh, the one I got, definitely, yeah. You know it is, don't you? You can guess. Hey, <laughs> hey, Devin Graham. So, I gotta grab something from upstairs. Stay right here. When I come back, we are going to go into my MVD collection, see the new one I got. We're also going to talk about the one-on-one -on -one film sale. I've got my one-on-one -on -one films collection here. I'm going to deep dive into everything that they got there that's on sale. And I'm going to give you guys some recommendations. And who knows, maybe I'll tempt you to spend just a little bit of money on, on Blu-ray collecting today because that tends to be what I do. It tends to be what I do. I shall return. Give me a second. All right, so I was hoping that was the mail, but it was just, it was the neighbor. I basically had a question and I almost fell down. Coming down here. Anywho, gonna open this up so I can actually see your stuff here in case I miss anything. We're talking today about MVD Rewind and 101 films. <clears throat> if you're, uh, does anybody here collect the uh, anything from 101 films. Tell you what, we'll go into 101 films first because I'll share my collection, I'll show what I got, then we'll look at those movies that are on sale, the titles that are on there. I mean, it's really good pricing, guys. Like, it's really, really good pricing. I have only six 101, ah, oh, nice. I only have six 101s in my, uh, in my collection. And, uh, only a couple red labels, but uh, the ones that I got are pretty awesome. I'll leave those to last. So, the way it breaks down 
is, and I don't think there's any black labels on sale for, for this one, is that there's the cult movie collection, there is the red labels, there's the black labels. The red and the blacks are the premiums, the blacks are like a, the black labels like the real, real premium, but the red labels are really, really great too. They got a lot of features. And uh, just, but the pricing on it is fantastic. So there's, you know, two pages on the sale there. It's six pounds per uh, per movie. So that means if you're picking up one of the movies, it's six pounds. If there's a movie there that's like a collection, that's like two movies, like that also looks to be six pounds. There's a, there's a couple like maybe seven pound ones there, but uh, again, uh, maybe an eight pound one for one of the bigger ones. But uh, really, really cheap stuff. Anyway, let's look. So I got three regular 101 Films titles, and I got three which I consider more deluxe titles. We, well, let's get into them all. They're, so first off is Firewalker, which is, of course, Chuck Norris and Lou Gossett Jr. So I'm a huge fan of, like, the action films. Hey, Jesse. And uh, I actually wanted this film for a while. And when 101 Films had their last sale, I actually went and uh, picked it up. I also picked up a movie that, I, that I'd that i seen on the uh, MVD Rewind label. And I remembered kind of liking it. But I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to invest in it. I wasn't like collecting MVD at the time, so I wasn't quite sure if it's something that I wanted to invest into with the features and all that. So I grabbed their edition of Double Dragon. And we uh, sat down and watched this on the day that the uh, MVD movies came. Uh, during the last sale and uh, It was excellent like we we really enjoyed the hell out of this movie I went out and I picked up <clears throat> the other you know the MVD edition double dragon as well But I won't get rid of this one either because I just like the way that it, that one one films look in my collection I like the way that they're done and uh, I've been collecting them. I do double over with certain things. I Know but it's the fantastic Jesse. There's so, so much great stuff <clears throat> Here's the thing this is going to, I'm going to tell you about some sci-fi and some action and some horror. I'm going to tempt you, Jesse. I'm going to tempt you on some stuff. And this movie here, which I think is utterly fantastic, and uh, I hadn't seen it since the VHS days, but this is Rutger Hauer in Split Second. I like this movie a lot, actually. I'm a huge Rutger Hauer fan, you know, it's, so I got a personal bias there. But I actually really do like this film. It's a really, really fun, fun film. Nice. I have none of the black labels. So this is one of the cult movie collections. So basically with this, I got this Lou Frigno collection because we already had this one here with Kino, but we didn't have the two Hercules ones and they're hilariously fun. Um, oh, then definitely. Well, I'm, I got my computer up here. Now my trusted computer like I do in my more recent videos. And I'll uh, actually go through them. I'll let you know. So this here actually, what's cool about this is you see this, and say, oh, it's six pounds, I guess, so there's only like, you know, it's only going to have one DVD. It'll be all crammed onto one DVD type of thing, right? Or one Blu-ray, sorry. But there's Hercules. Oh, nice. Welcome, Movie Collector Geek. There's Hercules 2, and there is Sinbad. So they each get their own Blu-ray. And uh, I, that really, like, that impressed me. So with that being said, let's look at a couple of the Red Label titles. I have two red label titles and what that means is these things have like where the other ones are pretty you know like, like they're pretty featureless type of thing you just have a trailer maybe something like that on it or maybe not even that uh but still got some really good films and it's a good way to like dive into films for like really cheap that you're not quite sure about um but this one right here i recommend this baby like big time this is amazon women on the moon this is one of my favorite comedies <clears throat> like Hands down, this one and Kentucky Fried Movie, I like those type of like skit films, right? So these are, this is one of my favorites. Now, I waited a long time to get this film on Blu-ray. I mean, a long freaking time. There is a, and just so you know, it's a, uh, it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It uh, comes with a booklet as well. Make sure, okay, yeah, so we can show that. And there is also, and I'll show you, Alternate artwork, which is actually kind of cool and cheesy if you understand the film. You probably get where, that come, where that's coming from. But aside from that, there's a ton of features on this one here. Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not even like, no hyperbole, no joking. There's like a lot of features. And not just features, but really good features for this type of film. 
So if you've never seen Amazon Women on the Moon, it's like a, it's a comedy that's kind of like a uh, one of those skit comedies, like a Kentucky Fried Movie or that type of thing. And it's got some really great stuff. Uh, oh, dude, you got to watch this. Uh, so there's an interview with uh, Carl Gottlieb on here, who was one, who one, who was one of the directors of the film. There is a uh, interview with cinematographer Daniel Pearl. Yes, that Daniel Pearl, the guy that Texas Chains the Massacre. Um, there's an audio commentary with Mondo Digital's Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, also interviews on here as well. But what's really cool is, and they don't even mention it on the back, but on, do they, oh, here they go. They mention it down below. There's like bloopers. There's six cutscenes. So there are skits that like, not just like scenes that were, you know, like skits that were cut, that were cut like down for length. No, no. There are actual skits that were cut out of the movie that are included on this disc, which is really friggin' awesome. Uh, so this, if you've never seen Amazon Women on the Moon through this Blu-ray, you have not truly seen the complete uncut Amazon Women of the Moon, which you will see here. So I always recommend this one. Oh, really? See, I didn't do June's Plantation this year. I really should have done it. I could have, like, made videos on it and everything, you know? And as you can see, with the uh, with the red labels here, we got, like, the white cases. White cases do tend, like, nowadays to show, like, sometimes more of a more premium product. And next up is one that I had to grab. Uh, I really do like this movie. You know, judge me if you want to, but Stone Cold with Brian Bosworth. I'm, I'm a big fan of this film. I, uh, I like biker films a lot, like these kind of, like, cop biker films. Um, you know, we got a great cast. You got Lance Henriksen and William Forsyth is in this one as well. Uh, just super, super cool stuff. And what's really neat about this, and I need more of these because it had a poster. But not just any poster. This poster really excited me, and I'll show you why. So it's not, it's not what's on the cover, by the way. And there is an alternate cover, but still not... This is the poster for Stone Cold. Not only is it like a uh, kind of a long, like kind of cool poster, it didn't need anywhere to do any sort of like uh, like company branding of anything like that. What's really cool is they included, just like you would like an action movie poster, they included all the, you know, the credit stuff down below. Because a lot of times you get like posters and they'll come and it'll be like, you know, it'll be like the, it'll be like just uh, the movie poster or the new artwork type of thing. And, uh, and it'll be that. And sometimes you get like in the bottom or one of the corners, you get like the logo of the company. Say it's like a screen factory or something like that. But this one actually, you know, takes the time, includes, includes it to make it look like an actual genuine movie poster. If you're going to a theater, you could see like something like this, like kind of like propped up in the lobby. And um, that's actually really kind of cool. That extra effort. Um goes like goes a long way for like uh for me i'll show the alternate artwork as well lance henriksen is one of those guys he's solid every time like it doesn't matter what the movie is he's always good and probably one of the reasons i watched alien 3 a second time okay so what's on sale what are we looking at so I got it up here. I wanted to do that. It's uh, <clears throat> there's a few titles. You know, not not too many. So, but some of these here are gonna be. <laughs> uh, I was, wasn't a fan of Alien Three. <clears throat> um, they shouldn't have killed Newt. That was a big mistake. They shouldn't have killed Newt. Kill Ripley if you want to, but don't kill Newt. You you set something up in the second movie. You set it up. You, you had a follow through. You know, don't don't cop it at the last minute. Follow through with that. All right. So here we go. Uh, now, I will let you know, most of these titles are going to be six pounds, so I'll only mention the pricing of a title if there's a different price on it. As you know, six pounds for a movie, especially these type of cult films, really, really good. Uh, so, first up, there is the movie, I think it's out here in North America. I got the Scream Factor edition. Um, yeah. <laughs> And that is the movie Nightmares, which is a cool little 80s anthology film. I remember seeing it when I used to live up in Alberta. And I really enjoyed that. What's really cool is the next one. So, I like the FX films. Uh, during one of the Kino Lobro sales, I picked up one of the FX films, right? Uh, the first one. But on the 101 film sale, you can buy FX, The Complete Illusion. 
so you get both FX1 and FX2 uh, as a set, you know, together. And uh, that's, you know, six pounds. I'll tell you what, let me just open it up here because the neat thing about this is I can actually just... Uh, I love the fact that I can do this. I should have started bringing my computer down here a while back. So what we got here on features, we got an interview with Christopher Crowe, producer and writer of the three of three of the four segments, commentary by Mondo Digital's Nathaniel Thompson. I'm going to guess that's probably like uh, only on here. There's a booklet, Anatomy of an Urban Legend film. If I had more money, I actually would buy this over again because I want the booklet. Um, an essay by Mikhail J. Coven and Scoring Nightmares, an interview with composer Craig Safin. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so I can go over and look and check my... Uh, my Scream Factory and just see if there's any difference. I'll be right back. I'll do that for you if I can find it. So the Scream Factory edition has a different commentary with executive producer Andrew Mirisch and actress Christina Raines. An anthological trailer. I think there's... And one's in widescreen and one's in full screen. So that's the differences. <laughs> that's the other good thing about being down here in the movie library is I can just go grab stuff. Oh, the one on one films one is definitely, in my opinion, a better a better release. The book that looks really cool too. Uh, if you go into the website, you can actually see it. It'll be the third picture down. You'll be able to see the booklet. We got the FX collection there that I mentioned there before. Next up is one that came out from Shout Factory. Uh, and if you want just uh, to get this movie, kind of, basically kind of watch it and see what it's like. Um, if you want to like dive in and get a Shout Select or something like that. This actually is a really dish, uh, cool edition of the film. And it's a part of the cult collection. So, what's neat about this one is it's going to have like a, it's going to have a poster with it as well. So uh, something that's not in the shout select one. Oh yeah, that, I would go with that one. If I hadn't didn't have the Scream Factory one, I would definitely go with it. I just like the the way that the one on one films one is done a little bit better. So Into the Night uh, actually has a poster with it. So remember the poster I showed you with Stone Cold. So Into the Night with uh, Jeff Goldblum. And Michelle Pfeiffer is here on Blu-ray, and it does have a, a poster with it, an exclusive poster. The next one up is Exterminator 2. Ah, so that's why I got the two versions, all right? Let's see if there's anything else about it here. The unrated version of Nightmares? I don't think I've ever seen the unrated version of Nightmares, but if there's one out there, <laughs> that's uh, probably only through nefarious purposes where you find it. Exterminator 2 is up next. Uh, of course, Stone Cold, which I showed you guys. <clears throat> it did suck bad. <laughs> I told you. Uh, next up is one. Uh, I, I, eventually, I'm going to have to get this one because uh, I just I love the artwork I do uh, Black Christmas you guys the 1974 Black Christmas is here I have the Canadian edition I will eventually get Screen Factor edition but I also want to get the one one films edition as well um, actually the only thing I need on Black Christmas is a uh, is a legacy documentary I think which was shown on sci on sci-fi TV here uh, Space Channel here in Canada uh, if that's the documentary that I'm looking for, because I got the Canadian edition, right? I, uh, you're a bad man. I, uh, I don't need the screen. I'm, this is going to make me sound horrible. I don't need Screen Factory Edition. I can get this for cheaper. Uh, we got some documentaries here. We got some t interviews with Art Hindle, with Lynn Griffin, uh, Black Christmas Legacy documentary. I'm hoping that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what's neat, there's a 40th anniversary reunion panel with Fa done at the Fan Expo in 2014. I'm not sure if that's on mine or not. i got to check. Uh, does the Black Christmas one have a poster with it? That'd be, that would be like a sweetness. I don't think it does, though. It doesn't say. 
but I love the cover. I mean, like the original artwork you said there's on the other side, right? I would keep this out though, because I've already got the original artwork. Because uh, I got it on, I got it on VHS too, right? Black Christmas. Yep, Black Christmas on VHS. Yep, Lynn Griffin, that's her. Uh, Lynn Griffin actually has a bigger part in, uh, I guess, in Curtains, of course, you know, if you've seen it, uh, than she does in, uh, in Black Christmas. But she has, a, she has an iconic role in Black Christmas. Lynn Griffin, for anybody that, you know, seen Black Christmas, uh, but don't, you know, recognize the name. She's the actress that, uh, that, that's killed at the beginning of the film that kind of sets everything in motion. So it, we see her like a lot in the film because we see her, her body in the, uh, in the infamous rocking chair uh, with, the, with the bag over her head um so uh oh yeah <laughs> she is extremely cute but uh definitely definitely want to check it uh if you don't have black christmas that is uh seems like a pretty cool addition and i don't know if i got that linger i gotta look to see if i got if i don't have those features uh, i definitely need it i will double and triple and quadruple dip for black christmas it is my favorite film Next up is Alien Nation, which is a highly underrated film, which made actually was a pretty good TV series as well. Did some TV movies later on, too. Uh, but this is the original with James Caan and uh, Mandy Patinkin. Uh, we have Isaac Hayes, Truck Turner from 1974, a very cool film. Uh, Two Minute Warning, which uh, is that out anywhere else? But I, I, I don't think they do like month releases, Jesse. Uh, not not in the same way. Like they they do like announcements and stuff, but I haven't seen any like kind of real monthly releases. Uh, there's no like packages or anything like that. Um, uh, Cherry Falls, again, I'd say their edition is probably just as good. Uh, yeah, Liv I think Livens is correct actually. Uh, it's more sporadic. There, uh, the, you don't see things coming out on a regular basis. Um, if you don't have Cherry Falls, I would, you know, you're never going to get the. As far as I know, the uncut version of Cherry Falls it just isn't out there. Screen Factory doesn't have it. Uh, 101 Films doesn't have it either. We get, you know, they got the only edition that they can get, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, Cherry Falls is there, and uh, you know definitely want to uh, would check that out. I think that has features on there as well. Again, there's Split Second, uh, the fantastic film. I actually highly underrated film for I consider it Toy Soldiers, which is actually a really good one. I like that one. Uh, done back in 1991. Uh, then there is the 1973 film, and let me see if I can pronounce this right. S <laughs> we'll go with that, right? It's a snake film. You know what I'm talking about. Now this is where it gets kind of cool. They do some like really good kind of like classic, like kind of like atomic monster movies as well and stuff on here and the old monster films. So 1955's Tarantula is here. Uh, it's a really nice edition. I've seen people unbox it online. I did, uh, see, I almost had it right, Livens. I almost had it right. Uh, and uh, it, they do really, really nice editions of these older films. Uh, Amazon Women on the Moon, if you don't have it, you gotta get it. Um, Next up is the Van Damme collection. I showed you the Hercules collection that had three, uh, the, sorry, the Lou Ferrigno collection that had three movies on it. <laughs> you See, then you got to own split second um, if you don't own it already. It has Death Warrant, Black Eagle, and AWOL. AWOL is known as Lionheart here in North America, but uh, over in the UK it's called AWOL. So, yeah, you get all three of them, they each have their own disc. And uh, super, super cool. I'm definitely going to be, uh, oh, that's tempting. Even though I got all of them, uh, but, uh, but it's still tempting. <laughs> I don't have Lionheart, actually. I still got to get Lionheart. MVD put that one out, too. Um, the Mole People, much like Tarantula, is a really kind of cool-looking, kind of like premium-looking edition. Re really recommend that one. They put out Lord of Illusions as well. Um, they put out a really nice-looking uh, version of Alligator People, which I do recommend if you don't have it. Hey, Mug, welcome. There's a one-on-one film sale. Um, Missing in Action, they put out a cool edition of that one. Phantom of the Opera, you know, there's some crossover screen factor as well. But they have other stuff like Paradise Alley, which is an underrated Stallone film. Uh, Future World is here. The Lost World, Island of Dr. Moreau, and that's the uh, 77 edition of Island of Dr. Moreau, the good one, in my opinion. Uh, Delta Force 2 is here. I don't have Delta Force 2, I don't think. Maybe, I gotta check. Uh, the Lou Ferrigno box set that I just mentioned to you guys that I showed you at the beginning of the video. The Land Unknown's got a really cool one. The next one is really kind of neat. So they have the Vincent, if you're a Vincent Price fan, um, there is the Dr. Goldfoot collection. And Dr. Goldfoot was like, uh, there's a time in uh, like cinema history, my, my dad's time, uh, when there's like these whole like uh, beach party movies and bikini movies, that type of thing. So Dr. Goldfoot is kind of along that line. 
So pretty much uh, Dr. Goldfoot is like uh, played by Vincent Price and he's kind of this like comedically dastardly evil character and there's always be these kind of like these you know these beach guys along the way but uh there's dr goldfoot and the bikini machine <laughs> yeah exactly um there is uh dr goldfoot and the girl bombs so more into uh that one there and for the third one there's a bonus dvd on here actually there's two two blu-rays one dvd uh or is it three is it, this is the dvd set is this a dvd collection i'll have a check i'll check for you uh, and that is Master of the World with uh, Vincent Price, which is more of the uh, more serious one. Just the artwork. Still, uh, uh, if there's a poster, I'd still get it. Uh, though I, I do like the with the credit thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I want to see more companies do that. So the Dr. Goldfoot collection, you know, that is... Now, just to let you know, the uh, Dr. Goldfoot collection is seven pounds. It's one pound over. But you do get, like, two cool films... And you do get the uh, Master of the World one there as well. Everything else so far that I mentioned to you, as uh, oh, I wish. I mean, like my dad's got a DVD collection of the Frank and Annette set, but I don't think it's ever come out on Blu-ray. Not yet, anyway. If there is, like, please let. If anybody like knows that there is, let like let them know because I, uh, as far as I know, uh, and I could be wrong because I miss out on a lot of the stuff. Firewalkers here, Skyriders, which is one uh, we were looking at, uh, looks a lot like a lot of fun. Um, I want to get the, the, the arrow editions of these films, but, uh, I like the original, the, the original artwork as well. And I'm sure it's probably reversible on the arrow ones, but, uh, Pray for Death with Shokazuji and Rage of Honor, which are two films that I really like. Cause I, I, I grew up in that, you know, like ninja kind of era of films. There is Solar Warriors. Is that one? what's called Solar Babes or something like that? Babies or something like that here in North America. I can't remember. There is Double Dragon, uh, the movie Dolls, which, which everybody's got already. If you don't have Dolls, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> it seems kind of tame for Vinegar Syndrome, but lately they've been doing a lot of different stuff, Jesse, so who knows? Um, I'm Going to Get You Sucker, which is fantastic, and their cover for I'm Going to Get You Sucker is, is just the best. It, the Terror from Beyond Space, we got... Uh, oh, there. this is a slightly more expensive one. We got Jack the Giant Killer, which... Is that one of their, uh, is that one of their black, this is a nice one. Okay, uh, so they have a big edition of Jack the Giant Killer. I guess it must be one of their black label ones. Uh, maybe it's one of their red label ones. But it's like, it's eight pounds. But uh, it has two versions of the film. We got the original 94 minute cut of the film. A re-envisioned 91 minute musical cut of the, <laughs> of the film. Uh, there is uh, like postcards. There's a limited edition O-ring. Uh, that's uh, it's red label, right, Scholar? I think it's red label. There's a limited edition O-ring on there as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's a really nice one. Um, so if you're a fan of Jack the Giant Killer, definitely the best way to grab that film. Next up, we got Ghoulies 2, uh, Ghost Warrior from 1984, Three Amigos from 1986 is there. Uh, if you don't want to like spend all the bones and like go out and grab the two MVD rewind. Like Nemesis sets, you can get all the Nemesis films. So if you're kind of curious about the Nemesis movies and you don't really want to kind of like dive in and like spend a bunch of money, because you know, uh, you can get the whole Nemesis collection, all four of them, in one set for uh, for ten pounds, which I think is actually a really good price considering that's less than I paid for just getting Nemesis or or the uh, two, three, and four. Uh, there is a Ghoulies with a really gorgeous cover. Uh, there's the BBC Haunted World collection, which has the Stone Tapes and the uh, and Ghost Watch. If you're from the UK and you're of that age, you probably remember Ghostwatch pretty well. Um, the Falcon and the Snowman from 85, again, another great one. Uh, I do like this movie. <laughs> I never even thought about that, Jesse. I, I don't think I could. I, I, would, I would go nuts because I, I know that was gone in my collection. Uh, uh, the next one is Basketball, which is another of the red labels. And uh, that is Trey Parker and Matt Stone from uh, South Park. And I actually do like that film. Uh, mean Guns, which is, oh, I think that's a Lambert, Christopher Lambert. And I see, yeah, Christopher Lambert is right there. Christopher Lambert, nice tea. Uh, so actually a really cool one. Uh, Blindfold with Rock Hudson and Claudio Cardinal. We got The Boxer with Daniel Day-Lewis. I've got a few more here to look at. Uh, there are so many great, so much great stuff. So AWOL, you can buy on its own. You know, the other one is Lionheart. Five Weeks in a Balloon. I might better have one, seven, actually. Uh, she liked that film. 
Plunkett and McLean. I don't remember what that one is. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Uh, Zorro, the 1975 one, so I'm pretty sure that's Elaine Delon. Uh, Sirens from 1994. There's Death Warrant. Sabotage with Mark Dacascus. I really like Mark Dacascus. Uh, he was really freaking good in the John Wick movie, like recently. Uh, Gang Related. Again, another one that I got to pick up because I do like that film. Iron Heart with Bolo Young. Monkey Bone. Monkey Bone needs some loving. It really does. Uh, Wedding. Wedding in White? Wedding in White. Okay, I don't know what that one is. I haven't seen that one. Now, the Black Labels usually go on their own sale. They're, you know, they're like the premium premiums. And they're very limited. Um, next up, there's Charlie Chan and the Curse of the Dragon Queen. That's the kind of the comedic Charlie Chan film that was done with Peter Ustinov. My God, I'm old. I remember that film. Uh, back in 1981. Uh, Blast from 1997 with Rutger Hauer. Uh, Iron Sky, The Coming Race is uh, five pounds. Um, I don't think I missed anything like price wise. So I'll, I'll let you know when something's differently priced. Uh, gang related. That's a steel book. Actually, got a steel book of gang related. So they do do some steel books as well. Uh, they had a steel book on the, in the last time too. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like the Ghoulies. They had like a Ghoulie steel book. It sold out really fast. Um, Nemesis. You know, if you just want to buy the first Nemesis, you can get that for like six pounds. Uh, Iron Sky, The Coming Race on Blu ray. It's got on Blu ray and DVD there. Uh, there's 51st State. Done, you know, it's a newer one, 2001. Uh, you can buy Hercules on its own. Crazy Six is actually kind of a cool one. I haven't seen that since VHS days, actually. Crazy Six, uh, Venture Hercules 2. If you're a fan of them, the Jeepers Creepers three films box set is there, uh, for eight pounds. So, you and actually, it's a gorgeous cover. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not, I don't like the director, but I do, I do love the, this cover, it's gorgeous for the Jeepers Creepers set. Uh, definitely check it out, like you can Google it. Um, Iron Sky Collection is on here for seven pounds. We got the Sinbad movie here for six pounds. The Playboys, which is I don't know, Before Dawn, it's a 2013 film, and that is here for six pounds. There's Black Eagle here, Red Con One, which is I'm not sure what year that was done. Bait from 2015 is here, uh, and Red Con's here on DVD if you like buy it for like a pound less, but you know go for the Blu-ray for that price, and you can also buy. The Orange Guy collection on uh, on Blu-ray for ten pounds, or you can buy the DVD collection for uh, for seven pounds. So there you go. Altogether, there is I think eighty something titles there on sale. If I did that correctly, did I do my math correctly? Yeah, eighty-two titles. So there's eighty-two titles there on sale from uh, from One One Films. If you don't have either one of these, I strongly recommend these titles right here, Amazon Women on the Moon. I don't think this I don't think this has a North American release. I think this may have like maybe a Kino release or something like that. I'm not sure. Is this one put out by someone, guys? But um, these are really great releases of both of these films. Look how sexy this cover. Come on, look how sexy that cover looks. Come on. Don't you want that? Get some Lance Henriksen love in your life. Some cool Brian Bosworth, you know, at his Definitely had his coolest. Now, just to let you know what the black labels are, uh, the, the black labels are limited edition ones that you do, and they're more expensive. But uh, <laughs> so right on, Scotter. You know, you know the sexy. And these do sell out. The black labels do sell out. Uh, so. They, they run around 15 pounds each, and that's regular pricing. Do the releases require a region-free Blu-ray player? Let's just look in the back here. I'll tell you right now. So as far as I can tell here, it does look like these are all region B. Uh, that being said, there are so many times that a region B one will actually, you know, be different regions. But these here do, like everything that's listed here is listed as Region B. Now, if anybody knows, if anybody's ever checked these out on like any, on any uh, Region A players or anything like that, uh, definitely, uh, definitely let people know here because I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, they have great releases. Uh, but I, I, like they're black label ones, like these are some premium stuff, some great stuff. Um, and I'm just going to like mention a couple of their black labels here. 
because these are not the black labels aren't on sale, but I do think that uh, the bear like looking into uh, roller coaster is the one is the first one to sell out. Uh, somebody there I think just mentioned them. Uh, their uh, I think Jesse mentioned like class 1984, which is a gorgeous one. So the first one they put out, for instance. Oh, okay. So they do kind of like have an ongoing sale to black labels. So the way that it works is their black labels are 15 pounds each, okay? But if you buy two of the black labels, then they're 25 pounds. So you save five pounds, basically. Um, now, they're, they're limited editions. They, uh, once they sell out, they sell out. That's it. Uh, then they'll put out a standard edition afterwards. But what comes with the limited editions? They have like this really sexy, like uh, kind of like an old card, uh, kind of a slip type thing. Uh, they'll have like a lot of like uh, features and extras like the one the first ones they put out and this one's still available too as uh, is Existence the which I really like actually uh, why don't I have this movie it's a Cronenberg film um, great little film you know stars Jude Law and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee yeah, Region Locked and Region Free so you got to check just to make sure with a ton of features by the way like Existence French I'll go to Class 984, because that's probably the one you guys will know better. Because um, I'm a geek for like for Cronenberg, so I I apologize. And they usually have like their it'll be numbered on the side. They'll have usually like a, like a book with them, like a booklet type of thing. Uh, cause there'll be Blu-ray, DVD combo pack, and there'll be like a, a ton of uh, of features there, uh, like brand new extras, additional extras. They just they they'll have like limited edition like booklets and stuff like that. It, it's really cool anyway. So, uh, and what's available on the black label, and these are not the ones on sale, well, the, the black label sale that they have going on is Existence, Howard the Duck, Class 1984, The Grifters, I'm a really big fan of that film, by the way, uh, Trespass, another one I like, uh, Roller Coaster Sold Out, um, Black Book, that's uh, Paul Verhoeven's film, uh, The Cooler, and now they got like a uh, kind of a regular edition of, uh, of Roller Coaster, but it hasn't got any price, it's still up there. Even though there's, they don't have the sexy slip with it anymore. Or booklet, I guess. Uh, let's see if they do. What do they include on the regular edition? I've actually been curious about that since they brought it back. So the, because Roller Coaster included both cuts of the film, right? So you got the U.S. theatrical cut, you get the German cut of the film there as well. Uh, you get like a, uh, it's a documentary on there. I guess the only thing it does include is kind of like when it comes like with Indicator and uh, Arrow, they won't have the slip cover and one of the booklet type of thing, but it'll have everything else. But yeah, there's a ton of stuff here uh, that are uh, that are that are on sale to look at, and a lot of the red label titles are on sale. Uh, you know, there's a few that aren't, but uh, by far and large, almost every one of the red label titles are on sale. Like Colossus of New York isn't there this time. I don't think uh, Crack the World is there, uh, or Room Two Three Seven. I think they put those out as well. But uh, you know, yeah, but you know that being said, and Project X, you know, from from uh, Wim Castle. Uh, the Grifters, Trespass, and Roller Coaster. Would you s swear by the Black Label Scholar? Is that a good label? I because uh, I haven't like I'm satisfied. I love every one on one film that I got. Uh, I just don't have any Black Labels yet. I got to get some of those. One of these days, I'll I'll get it. Yeah, Scholar swears by it, guys. That that's that's something to go with. Now uh, today I picked up a new well yesterday actually because um, a new MVD Rewind. Existence of Grifters. Nice. A fellow Cronenberg fan. Not enough of us out there. So I was excited today because yesterday I picked up a, uh, a new MVD Rewind. I was going to do a video last night, but I was actually I was really exhausted. I passed out yesterday pretty early. That's another reason to do this video early. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the M my MVD Rewind collection here. I will go into every one of these I'll, I'm gonna show you every one of these and I'll leave the new one to last because build a suspense even though I'm pretty sure you guys know what it's gonna be uh, now for people that aren't aware MVD is a is actually is a pretty good company that started I think at the end of 2017 or 2018 I can't remember uh, they announced that they were going to be doing a, pre a premium label called MVD Rewind. They were, they were going to have an MVD Rewind and there's going to be an MVD Marquee. Now, a Marquee would have like just like some different, like older type of titles, you know, 90s, 2000s, that type of thing. But MVD Rewind would be a very eclectic label. 
uh, that wouldn't just be like, wouldn't be like a Scream Factor, which is just horror, or wouldn't be like a, you know, like, like just Criterion, which is just that, but they wanted to give you sort of a Criterion style, kind of Arrow style level uh, to, uh, to, uh, to North American titles that don't get looked at very often. And they, when I say they had an eclectic, like, catalog, I, I, I cannot, like, that, um, I cannot emphasize that enough. But what's really cool is you're, you always get something unique and different from them. And uh, I've, there's one title that uh, I won't have to speak too much on because I mention it every time that I, uh, that I mention, like, movies that I think you should have in your collection. But we'll start off with number one. They announced two titles originally, and uh, this was the first one. And uh, I'll go into I'll show you it. So this is DOA, A Rite of Passage. This is actually a really fantastic documentary. I'm, um, I was into punk music a lot when I was, uh, especially when I was younger. And uh, so this pretty much deals with the, uh, with the Sex Pistols U.S. tour. You know, the ill-fated U.S. tour that the Sex Pistols has. There's some great, like, interview footage. And there's some great, like, uh, some amazing, like, uh, performances on here as well. Um, just some incredible stuff. Like uh, Billy Idol's band at the time, Generation X, is there. Um, you know, the Dead Boys, Rich Kids, X-Ray Specs, Sham 69. It's a ton of, like, really cool punk bands around here. But what's even better is that... Like in the features, I'm just looking back here. This box here is all special features. And I do love this slipcover, by the way. So special feature-wise, I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible but so that you guys know. And if you have, don't have this one, I do recommend it. <clears throat> we get the Dead on Arrival, the punk documentary that almost never was, which is basically a feature-length documentary <laughs> on the making of this documentary. And the... The documentary behind the documentary is actually pretty friggin' fascinating. Um, the stuff that he did and the stuff that he, uh, like, in order to get the documentary, it, it's really, it, it's really interesting. Uh, it's worth it alone. This could have been its own film. It could have been its own disc. But they included it on here. Uh, and they got, like, a lot of people that they talked to. Like, uh, you talked to Roberta Bailey. Uh, they talked to Chris, oh, God, I'm going to get his name wrong. Sel Weckes, uh uh, John Holstrom's on here, uh, just, uh, you know, Ultravox lead singer, Mijuri, uh, just some great, some, some great stuff. We got, like, uh, different interviews on here as well. There's, like, a liner notes. We'll show you that. So, we got a booklet as well. So, this is the inside. So, I love the artwork on here, so I want to show you that first. So, rather than have a regular... I'm going to take this out. Rather than have a regular... Uh, like reversible cover uh, they have you guys know that shot is one of my favorite like uh, covers that's that Vin vinegar syndrome ever did you know how I've got like an affinity for underground comics and stuff like that right <clears throat> that comes from like well my underground comics and my my punk background as well so this is the the artwork here for the uh, for the backs kind of got a kind of a cool little underground comic feel to it so I, I really really dig that it has a Blu-ray and a DVD. Now, the way that they do these is that MVD has kind of given it like this, uh, this kind of cool type of look. Um, people like just, well, it's, you know, it's white that type of thing. But it's kind of like, it's almost like it, MVD is, in, as a label is kind of punk on its own. Like, because this kind of looks like, you know, something that would be, like somebody would rip and like, uh, you know, burn off and do them. You know, and then they put the uh, the writing on the on on the white case. But I really love the white cut, white uh, discs. I love the way they're done. So there is a uh, a booklet here as well, with actually some really great reading on here and some fantastic pictures. And along with that, every MVD rewind uh, always includes uh, this and. It is a uh, mini poster, which is included. Now, the cool thing about the uh, is about DOA, the first one that they did, is that the first one, I think it's the only one that, that does this, actually has a reversible poster. So I, uh, I kind of dig that. And uh, I, the way I feel about these is like, when you're getting something like this, and just to show you, if you're kind of OCD like me, it's, uh, they're numbered. So 
<laughs> you need them all. Uh, the, I'm that way anyway. I, I, I need them all. I'm, I'm pretty OC. I need, once I see the numbers on the spine, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed. I need all the numbers. Uh, they do kind of give you, give it kind of like an old kind of like VHS aesthetic. They put like, uh, you know, like kind of, they make it look like they're stickers, you know, on the, you know, like VHS type of stickers and wear and stuff like that on the, uh, on the cases. And, uh, I, the only one I got that doesn't have a slip cover, and if anybody doesn't like slip covers and they got this movie with a slip cover and they want to send it to me, I, I would be uh, greatly appreciated. But we'll get to one that, that, that I have that doesn't have a slip cover, and I'll explain why it doesn't have one. Um, I haven't seen anybody getting any of these without a slip cover. Like, if anybody has, you know, definitely you know, let, let us know in the comment section. But uh, I haven't seen anybody get, like, get any without a slip cover. So number two is very different from the punk documentary DOA, and it is a fantastic little kind of like ultra cheesy, like horror comedy film, Attack of the uh, of the Killer Tomatoes. So this again, this is a really cool release. Uh, as always, it's got the cool kind of like the white lit case, white disc punk looking type of things. And you'll always get the uh, the poster, and I do like these little mini posters. I don't know if I'll ever take them out of the cases, but I, I just that fact that they go the extra mile for that. And again, there's features on there. There's like a lot of features. We've got an audio commentary with the writer director on here, and the and the uh, and co-star of the film, and the creator Costa Dillon. There's three deleted scenes, seven featurettes, including Le Lake Save a Legend, Crash and Burn, Famous File, Killer Tomato Mania. Where are they now? We, we told you so when slated for success. There's also the original 8mm short on here. Uh, what's, what's the most I've ever spent on a release? Uh, not a, there's no such thing as a relevant question. Um, I don't know, actually. Uh, probably the maybe the Ingmar Bergman box set that I've ever spent like on, a, on an actual like newer release. Probably the Bergman box set. I even got that at half price when I got it. Um, but there were a couple, actually. But to be honest with you, I don't know, because usually my better half, like uh, like on my birthday or something like that, like she gets me stuff that some stuff that's pretty awesome, some stuff that's out of print. So I never know what the prices of those cost. Um, and uh, I don't, you know, don't dare ask for a birthday present. But uh, that I can, that I know for that, because uh, a lot of this stuff I got like I got at really great prices. I got the Harry Potter box set, and I mean the huge like trunk set. And uh, I paid 20 for that. So I think that's actually pretty good. But uh, I would have to say probably the Bergman set. For one film, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I've don't. i never really paid a lot. Maybe my better, I know my better half paid a bit back in the day for uh, for Hell Comes of Frogtown, the Arrow release, before they announced like a, you know, a re-release of the film. Because she knows a fan of Roddy Piper, you know, he's Canadian like me. And, um, and I really like that film. But uh, I know she paid a bit for that one, but I really would know. Or maybe, I don't know if you would consider With No Eye like a one. That's not that's really a two movie, so it's got a big book, so that's probably not it. Uh, I don't know, really. That's a good question. I'll, I'll, see, I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out. Oh, original 8mm short film is on here as well for our Killer Tomatoes. And there's the original 8mm short that inspired Killer Tomatoes. So not only does it have the 8mm Killer Tomatoes short that inspired, that became the film, it also has the 8mm short that inspired Killer Tomatoes, and that also, and both of those shorts also include audio commentaries as well. There's Easter eggs on here, just a bunch of stuff. Maybe Nightbreed, yeah, actually, maybe Nightbreed. Uh, but I um, I got a good deal on Nightbreed, too. Um, <laughs> but I did buy two of them, I, bought, I, bought, I got one's a gift, uh, and I, uh, I bought one for my, uh, for my daughter, because uh, I was trying to, uh, to introduce her into like the world of like this she liked like Hellraiser and stuff wanted to get her into like the really what I considered like premium Clive Barker and uh, that's Nightbreed next up we got Black Eagle so we're getting to the action territory here as you can see it's a Shokuzuji film although Jean-Claude Van Damme was like heavily like uh, promoted on here as well um, it is like it is definitely a Shokuzuji film so like definitely know that going in I'm a huge Shokuzuji fan so, you know, that was never a problem with me. Uh, and there is some great stuff on here. We got, like, the um, like the original 93-minute theatrical version of the film and, and 104 on-cut edition. 
of it as well. We got Sho Kazuji, martial artist. There's a 21 minute uh, featurette which talks with uh, Sho and his son Shane, and I think maybe his other son as well. Uh, Making a Black Eagle is a 33 minute long one here uh, with uh, new interviews and that. We got Tales of Jean Claude Van Damme, because at this point, Jean Claude Van Damme wouldn't come on be to be questioned, be will be interviewed. Uh, and uh, there was uh, brand new interviews and stuff on there as well. And then there's like the script and screenwriter, which was 27 minutes. There's a ton of features. Again, it's got the poster on here. I won't have to take it out again. But as you can see, we're st starting to get like more of the stickers, Be Kind, Rewind. Now, when this came out, some people were upset. I'm, I'm not joking. Like people can get upset about like really minuscule things. So you see the Be Kind, Rewind sticker. So it's more oval. So some people were like, hey, that, that Be Kind, Rewind sticker should be round. You know, that should be a round, I remember the round sticker. Uh, so, yeah. So, in another edition of People Can Never Be Happy, people made a fuss about that. Because people can be... Uh, anyway, so number four I don't have, which is Savannah Smiles. It is a uh, dramatic film. Uh, really kind of like a nice... A nice film and uh, very different obviously you know we got a punk documentary like a horror comedy an action film and then Savannah Smiles which is completely different and but actually a really good film the the girl that played the little girl Savannah in the film actually she passed away uh, <laughs> I like that mug uh, but uh but there's a tribute to her on the disc I really got to get that one uh, I need all these so next up is one that I had been waiting for for a long time. This one was actually uh, Black Eagle and this and this next one were given to me by uh, by my good friend James. He sent them to me in a uh, in a in a package, and uh, he kind of got me hooked on the MVD after I saw this one. And that is Return of the of Swamp Thing. Now this is the Jim Minorsky Swamp Thing. It uh, of course it is the sequel to the uh, Wes Craven film. Uh, Dick Durack comes back. And here, and uh, we get like Heather Locklear as uh, Abigail Arcane. Uh, finally, we're getting to see Ar Abigail in, in the films. This is much more of like, uh, definitely more of a, uh, a cheesier type one, but it's way more, I'll be honest, this is way more like reminiscent of like, of comic book than, uh, than the Wes Craven Swamp thing is. And for me, I'm probably going to get some, some, a little bit of hate for this. I actually like this one better than the Wes Craven film. I, uh, I, I kind of do. Uh, there are some great features on here as well. We're looking at auto commentary from director Jim Wynorski um, and uh, composer Chuck Serena and editor Leslie Rosenthal. Auto commentary with Jim Wynorski on his own, done back in 2003. There's a new interview with director Wynorski, new interview with, with Leslie Rosenthal, new interview with uh, Chuck Serino, new interview with Late Year Entertainment executive. Uh, Arnie Holland, original theatrical trailers, uh, six promotional TV clips, two TV spots, two Greenpeace public service announcements. Those are cool, actually. Uh, 1989 promo reel, a photo gallery, and of course the uh, limited edition collectible poster in here as well. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a better sequel than that. But I do, I do like this one actually. Uh, this is my preferred swamp. Like my preferred swamp things was on TV right now, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, as far as movies go, this is the best one. Here's some messy day. You know, I got to show this one. This is the next one. This is the one that this is a movie that everybody should own. Like hands down, you all should own this film. I'm just telling you right now. Went to a mission. Went to Coney Island on a mission from God. Be back by five. Amazing film with John Cryer, who is an amazing Lex Luthor, by the way. Um, great film, which he wrote with the director. Him and the director co-wrote it together. Um, now, the, dire the director, Richard uh, Schenkman, uh, actually does a lot of features for, uh, and like documentary features for uh, for this company, MVD Rewind. Uh, so whenever, every time now when you see like a, a later type of like documentary on here, it, it's not great. I would just, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, like people are like talking about like it's the worst thing in the world. It's not like Exorcist too bad. Uh, is it like, is it is anybody ever going to like say, well, there's... What a quality piece of cinema Hills have Ice too. Now it's really silly. There's like a lot of padding with it and stuff like that. But it's not like horrible bad. It's not like the worst sequel ever or anything like that. It's not like a Rob Zombie Halloween two or or like a, you know an Exorcist two type of thing. Uh, there, you can get a lot more fun out of it than like uh, something uh, than something like that. 
uh, like 110%. The dark flash, <clears throat> the dark flashback is awesome because you're never going to get that in another film. The original one is a classic. It it is like a literal classic. Spilled my tea here. And you know you can't. <clears throat> so it's hard to beat a classic, right? But they they have fun with it. I had fun with it. Again, new interviews with the director and John Cryer, which are really good. You will watch the interviews right after the film if you're like me. Uh, auto commentary with the director and John Cryer. I actually I watched this movie. It was like late when I put this on like we're at one o'clock in the morning right so I watched the movie and as soon as the movie's over like it really really got like really got to me like in a, in a, in a good way it made me think uh did I spill tea on this god damn it sorry guys uh, so there was an introduction uh the interview there's like a there's a commentary so I watched it over again with the commentary and then I watched the uh the 18 minute behind the scenes featurette and then I watched the uh you know the little kind of like comedy short film, the producer that they put on here as well. This is, this it's loaded, it's tons of stuff. Here is one that, like if you weren't introduced, uh, <laughs> I know, but they're fun films. You, you'll get fun of If you weren't introduced with Swamp Thing through MVD Rewind, if that's not the movie that introduced you, a lot of people were introduced with this one right here. And this is abominable. A um, now, this is a fantastic film, and there's a really cool YouTuber called Serial at Midnight, so Heath, uh, great channel, definitely check out his stuff. Uh, he also has a website, Serial at Midnight, and there is some great uh, write-ups on there, and uh, there is a write-up on this film, where basically they talk about the fact that <laughs> this is a, Levin's, you know what? Whoever want to name poor quote, I hate that person. <laughs> this is a really cool film. Uh, <clears throat> this film's almost lost though. You wouldn't think that a movie done back in the 2000s, 2005, right? You're, oh, it's really fun. Would be would be a movie that was almost lost. But the director decided he want like these movies were being put out. He would like to get his film back. He like kind of like put out a good a decent edition of it, get it remastered and stuff. So he started looking for it. And he soon found out um, the, he could find portions, but he couldn't find, you know, he couldn't get the, the negative. Uh, he, it's fascinating, actually. Uh, and I won't go into it too much because I do want you to buy this disc. Uh, I'm, I'm not even joking. This is really freaking good. Um, he goes and he goes and he talks about what it took, like the lengths that he had to go through. To, uh, to find his film, which was done in 2005. You should not have a movie in 2005 get lost in the cracks somewhere and may maybe completely lost the time. This is how important physical media is. Um, people talk about streaming and stuff like that, but this is the only way to make sure. Lance Henriksen, yeah, there's a lot of people in this one. Uh, Lance Henriksen's in this one. Jeffrey Coombs is in this one. Uh, Paul Gleason is in here. Phil, Phil Morris is in this. D. Wallace Stone. Uh, Matt McCoy stars in this one. Um, Lance's part is actually pretty cool. But uh, <clears throat> basically, this is Rear Window with a Bigfoot. That's exactly what this movie is. Uh, there is a, uh, a guy in here who was basically Matt McCoy's character, uh, was, in, was mountain climbing with his wife. And there is an accident, and they both they both fall, and he's left in a wheelchair, and his wife doesn't make it. He's he goes up to the basically with his kind of with his uh, with his helper who's, who's who's an asshole. He goes up to uh, to this to this cabin to kind of confront his uh, demons and kind of like try to get out of his life to start his life over. Um, meanwhile, there's some very sexy um, like uh, ladies next door. One of which is the beautiful Tiffany Shepes. Um, and he, uh, you know, he notices them, he watches them, but he soon finds out that, well, he's not the only one watching them. Who else is watching them? A gigantic, a gigantic Bigfoot. And man, is this a good movie. There, there's, you know, some sketchy effects, but I think they're, uh, you know, for the time, I, I, it hold, they hold up way better than you think they would. Uh, 
features on here, and I do have to mention the features because uh, the director of the movie is Ryan, uh, I think it's Schifrin, uh, La you know, Laszlo Schifrin, you know, the composer, his his son. Um, so, and his, he actually scores it for his son. Uh, so you get an auto commentary with the uh, with uh, with Ryan Schifrin, with Matt McCoy and Jeffrey Coombs. So uh, Coombs is on here, which is always good. A new introduction by the director is on here. There's a back to the genre making abominable uh, film on here at Featured as well. There's deleted and extended scenes, uh, outtakes and bloopers. There's this really cool, really creepy short student film that he made called Shadows. It only lasts a few minutes, and I watched this movie on my own when I was by myself. And uh, not gonna lie to you. It creeped me out. Um, like the, not this, but Shadows then. I love Tiffany Shepard. She is gorgeous. She's on my, on the Google Doc list. High up on the Google Doc list. Uh, she started when she was so young too, man. It also has the 16 minute, well 70 minute short film on here. Basil Mobius, No Rest for the Wicked. I really want to see a feature length Basil and Mobius film. Because, anyway, so Basil Mobius stars, well, Zachary Levy, uh, Ray Park. Oh, dude, you, these are some really cool stuff. Uh, Zachary Levy, Ray Park, Malcolm McDowell, and Kane Hodder are all on this. And on here, on the Blu-ray as well, because they did some, like, uh, upgraded effects for uh, for the creature in that. Like, for his eyes in that, on the, in the Abominable. Not, nothing. Uh, they also include the original... Like without original 2005 edition of Abominable, you know, without the upgrades. So uh, you can watch it like the way you originally saw it, probably when you saw it on TV. Um, ton of stuff on here. Again, a uh, a great, great post uh, posters, you know, as always, many poster. But uh, for me, this is a uh, this is a highly rec recommended one. I uh, went in not remembering. I don't think I'd seen this movie before. Um, I thought I had, but I hadn't. And I sat down and I watched it, and it was it was fast paced. It definitely it was definitely well acted. They had a lot of great genre actors in here, and uh, I love the way I love the ending. Hey, Murderville, uh, abominable guys. Make sure you check this one out if you don't have it. I don't know why you don't because it's a really good one. So that is number seven. Number eight is Lionheart, which I don't have. So I can't show you that one. But number nine I do have. Uh, and number nine is Wind Rider, with, uh, which is an early film for uh, Nicole Kidman. Now, Nicole Kidman had been a, like a child actor in Australia before this. This was her first kind of like adult role. So this was the first time that she ever did like nudity and stuff, and it was like a big deal over there in Australia. They were kind of upset about it. And as you can see, they rectified and did a round Be Kind Rewind sticker for all the people that were angry about the Be Kind Rewind sticker before. So there you go. Uh, again, there's some neat little features on here. This is lighter feature, what lighter feature wise than most of them, uh, but still, it's a really cool film. And if you want to see like a young Nicole Kidman and the uh, buff, there you go. Uh, so we got like another commentary with the director on here and co-writer. There's music promo uh, featuring Nicole Kidman. Uh, Young Days musical promo on here, uh, windsurfing promo, Stills Gallery, and the uh, mini poster here as well. So uh, kind of a cool film. Basically, it's, uh, well, it's exactly what you think it is. It's, uh, it's a windsurfing film done back in the 80s in Australia. So pretty lighthearted, you know. Like I, I tell you, like, you, there's such a huge, like, variety. Like, every time I pick something up, there's a different genre. Uh, it's, it's, going, it's definitely going bandy back and forth. Next up is one that I really like. Uh, I was always a big fan of this film. I had the actually had the screener of this one before the movie even came out on uh, on, on VHS, and uh, Michael Rooker, but as a as a priest, I'm not joking, uh, and that is Shadow Builder. So I did not know that anybody knew this movie existed but me, uh, and even me, I thought maybe I maybe I dreamt it up a bit. But uh, Bram Stoker's Shadow Builder. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this film. Uh, you know, going with you know reasonable expectations, but I, I thought it was a fun film. Um, again, feature-wise, we got an auto commentary with the director. 33-minute making of Shadow Builder on here. And, you know, they talked to, like, uh, Jamie Dixon, who's, you know, the director, the writer, 
Michael Stokes, Andrew Jackson, one of the stars, Tony Todd, who's in this movie as well. There's a Shadow Bitter visual effects featurette and a Shadow Bitter, like uh, Kevin Yet Zagers featurette. Uh, again, this one, this one here does have. I don't think they all have. This one here is a decent little reversible artwork that I remember on the VHS cover. Well, there we go. And there's the other artwork. Weird, huh? That is a, such a different artwork. That one does. I had to show you that one. We're getting to the one that I picked up. Slowly. Next up is one that I really, I wasn't sure if I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, it's one of those like you're watching, you're like, do I like this film? It's weird, uh, but I did actually, I actually like this film. Uh, it's Oliver Grenier's uh, first film, and uh, that is Angel Town. Now, you guys probably remember more for like Nemesis, that's you know what he's known for. But uh, this is like the, this is a weird film, but uh, it, it's a fun film. It tries to be real, it tries to be very street, and it does that by actually like hiring like actual like gang members to be in the film. Uh, I'm not, I'm not joking. There's like, when you're looking at a lot of the people here and uh, they are actually, you know, you know, street, street gangs and stuff. Uh, and he does go in like a street gang area. Uh, so he does keep, he, he keeps it real. And basically, uh, you got this guy. What's the character's name? I can't remember now. Uh, anyway, so his character is a, uh, a guy like from Paris, and he gets a uh, get revenge for his brother. Was it his brother? He's getting revenge. I'm trying to remember now. He's. I don't think it's his brother though. It's his. Uh, no, it's from, from. Basically, what happens is he's going. He goes to uh, he comes from Paris to go to university. He gets a scholarship for kickboxing. I'm not I'm not kidding, and um, he go, he can't find like any, any rooms. He can't find a place to uh, you know place to stay. So like all the places on the list that he gets from the from the university, pretty much they're all, they're all taken. So he gets to this like really rundown area, this kind of this kind of like ghetto like gang gang violence area, uh, and uh, basically. He uh, he rents from the from this place, and uh, he immediately like clashes with the with with the gang leader. Now what happens is that the the person that he's staying with, the girl that he ends up like being romantically uh, like involved with, her her uh, her husband, I think it's her husband, uh, was was kind of like forced trying to force him to be in, into a gang before, and he, and he ends up like he was killed before this. Uh, you know, before he got there type of thing. And his son is now being, yeah, that's it. Okay, perfect. So his son is trying to be rushed into this gang and he's trying to stay away from the gang. Like, you know, his father died that way. So he's trying to be like to stay away from the gang and the gang is led by a character by the name of Angel, I think, uh, is trying to like get them in there. And like, they are mercilessly like, like going after this family. Like basically he's saying, no, I'm not going to be in the gang. And uh, because, you know, they keep coming to his door, like they... Like to kill like this old lady. It's like pretty. Is Mark Dacascus in this film? I don't think so. I think you're thinking of a different film. Uh, yeah, I think you're definitely thinking of a different film. Because um, uh, this is like Teresa Sedana plays like the uh, the mother in the uh, like in the film, uh, but. Uh, But yeah, Angel Town, not the Mark the Cascus film. I, I, you're uh, probably a similarly named film that you're thinking of, but uh, but uh, no, definitely not this one. <laughs> okay, next up is uh, is Bright Lights, Big City, uh, which was ironically one of the ones I was most excited to get, and uh, probably re on rewatch. Uh, was probably my least favorite out of all the ones that I got. Like, it's a decent film. Um, you know, it's got a good cast. You know, you got Kiefer Sutherland here. Uh, Phoebe Cates is in this one. Like, you know, smaller role, but important role. Diane West is here as the mother. Uh, it's a bit depressing. Uh, but uh, great music. You know, we got Prince, you know, Depeche Mode. You know, a lot of cool music in here. Uh, 
definitely some decent featurettes on here. Uh, we got like a commentary. We got actually two commentaries. I listened, I watched the uh, Jay McHenry's like featurette on here where he talks about the, the film and of course the book. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the, the features on Angel Town. So I apologize. Which again, archival audio, audio commentary on here, 2018 like interview, like a 43 minute interview, which is really good. Uh, there's a, a interview with the star Frank Aragon, one of the stars. It was just 30 minutes long interview with cinematographer John LeBlanc, and uh, which runs at 22 minutes and of making a featurette, and a bunch of other stuff on there as well. An archival interview with Olivier Grenier. Speaking of Olivier Grenier, he's in the next film here as well. Number 13, and one of the most highly touted films in the MVD Rewind collection, Nemesis. Uh, people have been wanting to see this movie get, get a Blu-ray release for quite a long time. This one is so well done. Um, this is Albert Payan's film, and it's a, it's actually it's, it's really good. I actually do like this film. Um, now, they give you a couple different presentations of the film. They really load it up. So you're going to get a high-definition presentation of the main feature, both in 235 and 178 aspect ratios. Um, there's, you know, this. it's in English and French and German with subtitles in all those languages. There's a 2018 interview with producer Eric Carson. There's an interview with Albert with director Albert Payan. Uh, there's also Nemesis 2.0 director's cut with director's with commentary done here, like in the standard definition, because that's you know as best as, as it can get for that one. On here, that that runs like longer than the original cut, I think. I pretty much think it does. No, shorter actually, shorter than the original cut, shorter than the theatrical cut. Uh, as well as uh, God, there's other stuff. There's also the the Japanese extended cut as well. So there's a Japanese cut that was, as far as I know, was only ever put out on uh, on Laserdisc, never on DVD, never on Blu-ray or anything like that, or on even on VHS. I think Laserdisc was the only thing I've ever seen this Japanese cut of uh, Nemesis on, and uh, with you know Japanese subtitles burnt in. Like this was hard. This was a hard find. Uh, you know, introductions afterwards, um, just a ton of stuff on here. Uh, you know, if you're if you're into these type of films, definitely one you gotta have. Next up is the one that I'm looking for a slipcover for. So now up to here, you're gonna realize that all of them had like clear cases. So the distributor that they worked with that gave them MVD their clear cases, no more. So in order to uh, to keep them priced at what they're priced at, because they actually are priced pretty good, the the here switch to the uh, to the blue cases. So if you're like really like OCD about the coloring, you can all go out and like pick up some clear cases. It's not going to cost you that much. Uh, but anyway, so first up is this one here. If anybody has a slip cover to this and they want to get rid of it, and want to send it my way. Uh, it's Double Dragon. So what happened here basically is this one came out at Walmart, and the initial release of this that came out at Walmart, uh, both you know put a, did just didn't come with a slip cover. So, which made me think, okay, maybe all the retail editions are just not going to have slipcovers. But no, this was the only release that had that, that happened to. This was also the first release that had like a a, a blue case. So uh, I kind of wonder, like, I was wondering, like, are the slipcovers gone? Are they changing? No, it was just for uh, for, this, for the retail release at Walmart for, for that. So this is Double Dragon. Feature-wise, this one is, is loaded. Uh, we, like, really loaded. On this one here, you're going to get... The making of Double Dragon, which is a feature length, like at least an hour and a half, close to two hour long documentary on here. Like interviews everybody. Scott Wolf, Mark Tacasca. There's your Mark Tacasca here, man. Uh, <laughs> Peter Gould, Michael Davis, uh, Don Murphy. There is a Don Murphy portrait of a producer. That actually, actually is a pretty long feature as well. There's archival feature on here, behind the scenes feature. There's a 1993 uh, Double Dragon animated cartoon pilot. So the animated pilot of the you know the uh, Double Dragon animation animated series is on is on here, which is amazing. I love that. Um, Shadow Falls storyboard gallery, press photos, marketing, and still, and scenes, just a ton of stuff on here.
add to. There you go, baby. Excellent addition. If you like this film at all, if you're a fan of Double Dragon, if you like comic, I'm sorry, if you like video game movies, you're, you're going to want that one. You guys are so quiet tonight. Wasn't both. Wasn't what? Was it Angel Town? Was it really? Oh my god, you're right. That's an early role for the Cascos. I totally forgot that. But it's mentioned in the documentary on it. It's been a while. See, that was one of the first... Angel Town was one of the first I watched. Um... Uh, Speaking of uh, action-y type movies, there was Showdown. So this is... No, 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 no. Karate Kid, sort of, with Billy Blanks as Mr. Miyagi. I, I, I'm not even joking there. It's, it, that's pretty much uh, what you get. I'm pretty much sure it's Billy Blanks. It's Billy Blanks, right? Is it Billy Blanks? Yeah, just making sure, because you, you, you offset me with the, with the Mark the Caskis remark. Um, so, Showdown, fun film, you know, it's an action film, basically, and again, has an amazing documentary on here, a 98-minute documentary on the making of Showdown, done by the guy that directed, went to Coney Island, I miss from God, be back, in, be back by five. So, the guy that directed... That film actually directed the document, the making of documentary. It's a new documentary, by the way, on here as well. There's a documentary. There's Robert Rattler, uh, portrait of director. Uh, there's a 47-minute like fights of showdown featurette on here. Billy Blanks martial arts legend. Uh, you know showdown anatomy was seen. So a ton of stuff. A 98-minute documentary on showdown. Who would ever think that showdown would get like a 20-minute documentary, let alone a 98-minute one? So uh, that one I, I super I super dig. Ah, all right, we're almost there. So next up, oh, they're de they're really cool releases, so Scalder. I th I think you, it's once when you start buying them, you kind of get into them and you and you kind of want more. So this is really cool. So this is Nemesis Two, Nemesis Three, and Nemesis Four. So it's three films on here. Um, feature wise, you know, it's we got like uh. Not a lot, not a lot feature wise. Basically, there's like a 20, usually it's 20, 18, 20 minute long interview with Albert Pion for each of the films, right? So, so Albert, Albert Pion talks about two, talks about three, talks about four. So, that's what they go with this feature wise. And of course, the trailers and the technical poster and stuff. So, we'll open this one up here. And yeah, I think the poster is the same as the artwork on the inside and the outside, and it is too. So, which are fun films. Of course, Olivier Grenier does not return for the Nemesis sequels. Uh, there, there's this late, this female like bodybuilder, that's uh, used for the uh, for those films. What are you looking at, kitty cat? And last but not least, I picked this one up today at well yesterday, sorry, at Walmart. And I'm super stoked to have this film. Because I, uh, I do like the dude's films, and I really love the way this one is done. The features on this one are incredible. And that is Double Impact, Jean-Claude Van Damme. So I'm a big fan of this film. I actually really like this movie. Uh, I think it's one of his better films, to be honest with you. And uh, it's kind of neat because aside from like having the martial arts that's in the film, it also has like kind of like gunplay in that too, because one of the you know, as you can tell, one of the brothers, you know, they both know martial arts. One of the brothers, you know, uses a gun uh, more so than the other one does. Uh, Feature-wise, you're not going to believe it. So Double Impact uh, is really well done. So basically, uh, you get a the new The Making of du Double Impact. Say Great Minds Think Alike. Runs 53 minutes long. This for part one. There's two parts to this, uh, I guess, double, right? There's two parts to this documentary. So the second part of this of this uh, documentary runs at 59 minutes long. So, you know, almost two hours altogether. Now, this does include, you know, remember when I, earlier on when we were talking about Black Eagle and I said, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, he didn't come to be interviewed or anything like that for Black Eagle. He's interviewed on this one. Like, this is a 
and this is a new documentary, and he is the interviewed John Claude Van Damme, the director, you know, a bunch of people on that for this here documentary. Again, we get like extended, we get deleted and extended scenes on here, but we don't, not just a couple. No, there are, God, my hair's all messed. I, I swear, as I'm going by, my hair's getting, it's just going all over the place. It's going, there's 54 minutes of deleted scenes in this, uh, in this one here. 54 minutes of deleted scenes. That's insane. Um, we get new double impact in the end. We've seen another one of those on here as well, which we, of course, we had on Showdown. Uh, we get double impact. The 1998 behind the scenes uh, featurette, uh, which apparently is pretty rare. Uh, the uh, Double Impact 1991 B-roll selection. Double Impact 1991 promotional film clips. 1991 cast and crew interviews are on here as well. Uh, there's a Double Impact um, MVD collection promo. Original Thetico trailer. And of course the uh, the poster here as well. And uh, the uh, this one is the, la the latest one that I... Yeah, this is the latest one that I got. This is a really, really good one. Um, so there is one other one out, and it is a Mark Dacascus film, actually, I think. Uh, yeah, which is Boogie Boy, which is just recently came out. I haven't seen the movie since its, its VHS days. And uh, I do remember the, uh, the, the cover that I had it in, because I had, like, one, there was a store that was closing down. Uh, Abominable Shadow Builder. So you went for the horror ones, Ryan, right? Uh, the actual ones are really good, too. Uh, but if I was to pick, you know, like, I don't know, like three or four movies. Get the Fox one. I got that. I got the, I think I got that, too, actually, the Fox one. But, man, you know what the Fox one doesn't have? Any features. <laughs> at all so you want this man you you, you want this because this isn't just like you know this isn't just double impact this is double impact with 54 minutes of deleted scenes and over a hundred minute long documentary not including the anatomy of fight scenes or like sequences like that but yeah like the features are incredible like as you know i'm a huge fan of uh of one one films and the stuff they do i love double dragon i could have just gotten you know i would have been good with this double dragon but you know this is great one but this is their their featureless one um tell you what let me just go on to amazon here now i paid 24 dollars canadian for uh for double impact which uh and i paid 19.99 for uh for uh double dragon uh Sometimes you'll find them kind of cheaper and sometimes you get them a little bit more pricey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Amazon CA and Amazon.com and we're going to look at the prices on MVD Rewind for you. That way you can, because uh, sometimes you'll find them like cheaper ones. So. Let's see if we can find MVD Rewind here. So Double Dragon, for instance, at, in the Amazon.com, because I'm guessing most of you guys here are not from Canada, are, is 1990, uh, Abominable is 1722, Return of Swamp Thing is like 1746. This, these are really good prices, actually. Uh, Shadow Builder is $15. Black Eagle is 16 uh, Nemesis is, uh, is 25 Looks like the most, eight, like Lionheart is 18 Like Attack the Killer Tomatoes is 16 bucks. Uh, do they not have one the Coney Island anymore? It's available to rent, but I don't see it available to own. Uh, Angel Town, 17, like Wind Rider runs 15, you know, Double Impact runs 26, but that's a bigger set. Like, there's like a lot of stuff on that one, so I can understand what that one being more expensive. Uh, Boogie Boys, which is a new one coming out with Mark Dacascus, that's $22. I think that one just recently came out. Uh, Nemesis sequels, like 2, 3, and 4, second page. Oh, <laughs> you're ahead of me, right? Is uh, $16. Um, DOA is twenty dollars, uh, sixteen dollars for Bright Lights Big City, sixteen for for Savannah, sixteen for uh, Went to Coney Island, nineteen for Showdown. So there you go. And in if you're in Canada, you're gonna it's gonna cost you a bit more because uh, they're they're running like thirty three to thirty nine dollars for some, twenty eight or twenty nine for others. Uh, you know it it runs a gamut for Canada for Canada. We we always gotta pay more. 
Uh, but uh, still, you know, Showdown is $22 in, in Canada, which is pretty damn good. I keep an eye on them, like usually price-wise, see which ones go up and down. Right now, Savannah Smiles is at $29. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of that film as like, so that I'll pay $29 for it, but if it goes down to $20, i will grab it right away. Hey, Trini. <clears throat> but yeah, that is, right now there's like 18 that are out there. Uh, so there's three that I don't have. I don't have Savannah Smiles. I do not have Lionheart. And I don't have the latest one, Boogie Boy. But... I have an almost complete collection of MVD Rewind, and I'm super proud of it. And this is it right here. So if you get MVD Rewinds, this is what your collection is going to look like. Just so much sex in this here. You get mini posters with every one of these. Every one of these usually are loaded with features. The lowest amount of features, again, is on Wind Rider. But I still think Wind Rider is a fun little film, especially if you're a Nicole Kidman fan like, like I am. Um, but if I had to pick out like just five at random that uh, that I think everybody should own, um, <clears throat> you know I'm going to pick out went Coney Island one, so I'll, I'll leave that one out because you know that was going to be there anyway. But uh, Abominable, definitely, <clears throat> for sure. Uh, Double Impact, yep, and that's the latest one. Um, Double Dragon is a, a cheesy as hell. But it's such a fun film. And Alyssa Milano's never looked better than she does look in Double Dragon, actually. Um, Alyssa Milano and, and the girl from uh, Christina... What's her name? Christina Wagner from uh, General Hospital. She's gorgeous in this film. She's a bad girl. Um, great features on Double Dragon. I mean, you're getting, like, documentaries on here. You're getting, like, cartoons on there as well. Just amazing stuff. So if you haven't checked that one out, definitely grab that one. Um, I do like the... Um, the Nemesis films, like, so I would say at least grab the first Nemesis film. You can see my cat in the background there, kind of, like, exploring, looking around. He's photobombing me right now. Aren't you? Aren't you photobombing me? You are. I know you are. Do you need food? Is that it? Do you need food? Okay. All right. Apparently, I am being summoned. <clears throat> I have to, uh... To go grab some food for a for a hungry kitty cat. So there's a one-on-one film sale going on right now for people that came in late. Most of the titles are six pounds. Really, really cheap to get. MVD Rewind, if you haven't started collecting them, we're 18 in now. Now's the time to start collecting them before it gets gets the way too many to what the start of collection. Think about this. There are 18 titles in there. MVD rewinds are usually pretty reasonably reasonably priced. You get some great stuff from like some action to horror, you know, all kinds of stuff there. Uh, you get to get mini posters. You're gonna get f like features like crazy, like feature length documentaries and movies you never thought you'd get. Showdown, the a the action movie Showdown gets a feature length movie documentary. Um, just incredible, incredible stuff. You may never get every Criterion because. You know, some of them are out of print. You may never be able to collect every Vinegar Syndrome because some of those are out of print with, with paying a lot of money. Vestron Video, their prices go up, so it makes them hard to collect sometimes. You just got to grab them when they come out or you're, or you're, or you're just going to be screwed. But MVD Rewind, they're reasonably priced with a ton of features with, you know, Arrow video level of features on their uh, on their stuff. They include a mini poster with each and every one of their releases. They have amazingly well done like slip covers. It gives a feel of the old school VHS rental stores. So, with that being said, don't wait. Just grab yourself some MVD Rewind. Check out the one on one sale. My name is Aaron. <clears throat> My vice is going. My kitty cat's waiting. So, I'm Aaron. You guys are the movie club. As always, you guys rock. You guys were a little quieter than you usually are. Um, but uh, when I come here, do my next video, let me know what you guys picked up from the one-on-one -on -one film sale. Or if you picked up or looked at any of the MVD Rewinds. If I've convinced you to get any of the MVD Rewind stuff, let me know. 
uh, and uh, you know you can always like uh, tweet it out or uh, and yeah and, and message and kind of like tag me in the tweet so as always I guess I got to say that thing that everybody says right uh, like share subscribe hit the notification bell to be notified for like future videos uh, and all that jazz anyway I'm still waiting for some of our stuff too I got like two things to come but it's come coming through regular posts ra rather than what I regularly get so that usually takes a lot longer I get two more arrow releases coming in the mail and uh, when I do we'll do another video thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon my voice is gone